Dubai's population has expanded by over 600% over the course of the previous 30 years thanks in large part to the wealth that comes with the city's status as a prominent oil center. The city of Dubai, as it exists in the modern metropolis, is located on the edge of the desert near the water. It is home to several renowned structures as well as massive construction projects. There is another sale that is comparable to Burra. Glistening Mammoth Commercial Centers and the luxurious Palm Jumara Island with its shape resembling a tree can be found here. It is arguable that the most well-known structure is the futuristic Burj Khalifa, which is now the tallest building in the world and serves as a symbol for the city. Come along with us today as we investigate the progress being made on the Burj Khalifa. The Burj Khalifa Towers dominate Dubai with their staggering height of 823 meters, which is slightly over a half mile higher than the spectacular fountain show that is displayed in the area in front of the tower. In addition to this, each year the tower cooling systems supply the fountains with 15 million gallons of recycled water to use for their operations. Alternatively, as much as would be required to fill 20 swimming pools of the Olympic size, as is the case in Dubai. The building of the Burj Khalifa was, on the whole, carried out in a way that was both inventive and quick. After only 1,325 days, or slightly more than three and a half weeks, the building was able to break the previous record held by the Taiwanese building Taipei 101. This achievement came after the building broke the surface of the earth. January of 2004 marked the beginning of the excavation process. The ceremonial opening ceremony was held in January of 2010, although the actual opening didn't take place until a little bit later. The total cost was approximately $1.5 billion. However, this was never a major concern due to the fact that a significant portion of the Burj Khalifa's internal area had been sold off plan prior to construction, beginning in order to be used as a neighborhood landmark. The approach taken by the Birch Khalifa, Skidmore Architects, based in Chicago and recognized for their expertise in building tall structures, was victorious in a contest that included several of the most talented designers from around the world. The majority of issues that arise in the realm of building are inherently connected to height. These issues include how to build a structure that is capable of withstanding the elements up to that level and how to physically transport the necessary materials there. In a more figurative sense, construction sites are meant to resemble the Hayman Callus desert flower, even if this may not be immediately apparent to an observer who is only passing by. The tower's natural sense of stability is achieved by constructing its three basic components around a central core. As the tower rises higher into the air, the floor area becomes increasingly constrained. In addition, the design features. There are quite a few windows in this building. In point of fact, the ability of the bird to weather storms is highly dependent on its aerodynamics, which it maintains despite the absence of the momentum dissipation damper mechanism that was utilized in Taipei 101. Because of the unequal cross-section of the building, it is clear that the force exerted by the storm is not evenly distributed across the entirety of the building's height as it presses on it. A structure that has the appearance and outline of a three-pointed star possesses the potential to exhibit excellent torsional properties. When the building is subjected to enormous forces, successfully preventing it from twisting and bending, as well as the potentially hazardous wave-like motion that could form in a structure with a more conventional shape. The gradual shrinking of the floor spaces was put through extensive testing with the help of the computer, as well as with winds and tunnels. In addition to its distinctive appearance as a landmark, the stunning final shape also features a highly functional design, which was necessary to ensure the structure's stability at such a great height above the ground. The construction project was on a massive scale. It is estimated that around 22 million man-hours were contributed to the building of the structure by more than 12,000 individual personnel who came from 100 different countries. The finished structure required 330,000 tons of concrete and 39,000 tons of steel rebar to complete the construction. Just the steel rebar that is used in the building could be stretched to reach halfway around the world. A foundation that reaches more than 50 meters below the surface of the ground can be formed by dipping 182 concrete bars into the ground. The core of the foundation is a concrete mat that is 3.7 meters thick. 
This mat serves as the structure upon which the entire system is constructed. The foundations of the Burgo are constructed out of a total of more than 45,000 square meters of concrete. During the course of the construction, the cranes emerged as an unanticipated topic of discussion. They were always hard at work, and between the three of them, they had the strength to lift anything up to the 156th story of the building. Height higher than 700 meters in total, even the designs for lowering the cranes need to be accurate and exhaustively detailed. As a direct consequence of this, they were big and cumbersome, pumping concrete at high pressures, 200 bars, which was necessary for the building's core, was yet another engineering marvel that had never been performed before the Burj Khalifa. To give you an indication of the extent of the materials, just cladding the building's facade, which required an additional 300 engineers in addition to the team that was working on the construction, established many records. It would take five very large Boeing jumbo jets to equal the amount of aluminum that was used up in this project. The elevators also have fairly beautiful interior designs on the ride itself. The Burj is made up of three enormous sky floors, and these floors act as the hubs for the main elevators. This allows the smaller local elevators to feed the remaining levels from the centers of the building. Although the primary service elevator climbs more than 500 feet, there is not a single elevator that travels all the way from the top to the bottom of the building. That gives it the record for the tallest single elevator rise in the world. Once again, eclipsing the previous record holder for the highest tower in the world, an incredible total of 57 elevators can be found within the Burj Khalifa. At the very pinnacle of the Burj Khalifa is a spire that has become synonymous with the building itself. This spire is a telescopic construction that was created up of more than 4,000 tons of structural steel. Originally built within the confines of the, this building extends out to a distance of 200 meters after which hydraulics were used to elevate it into its ultimate location. The continued running of the building is challenging for a number of reasons, including the plumbing and the electrical systems. Consider, for example, a story that is twice as long. At least once every 30 levels, there is provision made for the area necessary for the installation of the essential apparatus needed to keep the tower operational. These floors house a variety of mechanical and electrical components, such as pumps, air handling systems, water tanks, and electrical substations. The substantial quantity of cooling that is necessary around the tower is in addition to the general use of water, and an entirely separate piping system was developed internally to deal with that cooling liquid and condensation alone. This was done because the amount of cooling that is required around the tower is in addition to the general use of water. The pumping of water is a unique challenge due to the combination of the high altitude and the humid climate of the desert. In order to keep operations going during building of the Burj Khalifa, a daily water consumption of 250,000 gallons was necessary. All of this operational apparatus was brought down to the basement by those who did the lifting. Regarding the Burj's less appealing but utterly indispensable flaws, for the shining national symbol, we utilized a variety of lifts and cranes in addition to a hoist and the primary service lifts. Keeping a professional attitude at all times is also very important. After all, the customers were the ones who paid for the luxurious setting and the breathtaking vistas that contributed to this success. The maintenance and window cleaning equipment in the tower is telescopic and permanently installed. This is because the tower is home to one of the jobs that we can only think is one of the most stressful in the world. The entire exterior is cleaned once every three to four days at regular intervals of the houses of the Burge family, as well as other extremely luxurious individual residences, as well as hotels, restaurants, and public viewing facilities. In addition to that, it offers a variety of recreational facilities, such as swimming pools and fitness centers. One may make the argument that the building has developed into its own community in its own right. Even now, 11 years after it initially opened, it costs more than $100 to enter the Khalifa and enjoy the view from one of the floors that is available to the public. Although the hotel was designed by Giorgio Armani, the world's highest nightclub can be found on the 144th floor of the building. But staying there will only take you as high as the 30th floor. Surprisingly, there are already preparations underway to outdo the Burj. 
Already, India is debating whether or not it should construct a 110-story building in the crowded city of Mumbai, and South Korea is also thinking about constructing a possible rival structure. Oh, and what about the urban myth that the Burj has the capacity to add more floors in the event that it is ever expanded to a greater height? It can be summed up as such. The Burj, on the other hand, is easily recognizable and stands as a symbol of Dubai's economic success and technical ingenuity. That's all for today. If you liked the video, please subscribe to our channel Luxhaven and don't forget to hit the bell icon.